Hello superheroes, I'm Scarlett Grace from UnseenSerif.com and today we're going to talk about three things that people do that are messing up their manifestation. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to share with you three things that many people do that mess with their manifestation process and prevent their desires from manifesting or gets them partial manifestations. Before we begin, I wanted to quickly let you know that I've created a free five-day challenge that you can join that's going to help you discover and fix your manifestation blocks. Lots of people have seen amazing results from this challenge, so if you want to get awesome results too, then you should totally try it. It's totally free to join, and I'll put the link below in the description. I also want to invite you to join my Facebook community, where you can ask questions, get answers and support, and also you can suggest topics for future videos. You can find this link below in the description too. So let's begin with the first thing that a lot of people do, that blocks their manifestation, or that causes what they want to manifest only partially. The first thing that people do that's messing up their manifestation is that they aren't picturing the end. To manifest something, you need to create a scene or a slide in your mind of something that implies that your desire has already manifested. A scene that would happen if and only if your desire had already come to pass. For example, such a scene could be receiving a phone call from your mom or your brother where they congratulate you for getting a promotion. For a congratulatory call to happen, it means that your promotion has already manifested. This particular call would happen if and only if the promotion you wanted to manifest had already taken place. What many people do though is instead of going to the end and creating a scene like the one above, they will go to the middle. For example, They'll create a scene of them asking for a promotion and they will imagine the conversation with their boss going well. The problem with this is that this is not imagining from the end. First of all, that conversation going well doesn't really mean anything. Maybe your boss will decide later that someone else is better suited for the position you want. Maybe you got to the top of his list of employees to promote but they decided that no one will get a promotion this year in the company. There are a lot of maybes, and that's because you picked a scene from the middle of the manifestation process, not one from the end, where you already have what you want. And if you pick a scene from the middle, then your end result isn't guaranteed. What you need to do is go beyond the moment where you would get that thing you desire into a scene after it has already happened and focus on that scene. The scene where you're having a party to celebrate your promotion, for example, or the scene where you overhear someone telling someone else that you got a big promotion last year, or the scene where a family member calls to congratulate you on the promotion. Remember, all you have to do is speak the end result you want and leave as if it's already true. How it happens is not your responsibility, so don't pick scenes from the middle to focus on, thinking that if you nail that talk with your boss, then the promotion is guaranteed, for example. Focus on the end result and on your scene that comes after your promotion. And maybe things will happen in a much easier and faster way than you would ever imagine possible. Maybe you won't even have to have that talk with your boss. Maybe you'll just go to work one day like you do every day and you'll just be handed that promotion without having to say or do anything differently. Who knows? It's not your job to know. Your job is to focus on already having what you want to manifest and the rest is guaranteed to happen on its own. All right, let's move on to the second thing that many people do that blocks their manifestation. The second thing is they aren't participants in their own scene. Let me explain what I mean by that. There are two ways of visualizing something. The first way is a lot like watching a film or a video someone took of you and other people. So in your mind, you watch this video of yourself getting into that new car you want to manifest or being on a date with your specific person. 
It's like watching it on a TV screen or at the cinema. The other way to visualize something, and getting this one right is vital, is to be an active participant in the scene. So when you visualize your scene, it's not like you watching a video of yourself. It's you acting out your part, being in your body and looking out of your own eyes. You're not the actor watching one of his films at home with his friends. You're the actor while the scene is being shot. What you want to do for your manifestations to happen is visualize in this second way. As if you're right now acting in this scene. This is very, very important and I'll explain to you why. When we visualize a scene where we look at ourselves doing something, this on a psychological level means we're dissociating from the scene. If you experience the traumatic event, for example, and you have to work with it to heal it, in many methods you will be asked to picture the scene not as it usually plays in your mind, as you actually experienced it, but to picture a TV screen in your mind and the scene playing on that TV screen like a movie. That creates emotional distance that helps you work on changing or reframing the scene without having as extreme a negative reaction to it as you had before. It makes you subconsciously feel that this didn't happen to you, it happened to someone else. But when we're talking about manifesting something, there's no reason to create a distance. Because if you want to manifest something, then that means that it's pleasant to you. You don't want to keep a distance between you and that thing. You want to fully experience it, right? So what often happens when people use a scene with a watching a movie kind of visualization and not the being an active participant kind of visualization is that what they're trying to manifest will manifest in their lives, but it won't be theirs. For example, a lady wrote to me once to tell me that while manifestation methods in general work for her, she keeps getting weird and unexpected results, as if the universe wants to show her that it has a sense of humor. Specifically, she wrote about how she really likes designer handbags, but can't afford them most of the time, and how she spent two months focusing and manifesting a specific designer handbag she had fallen in love with. Well, after two months of daily visualization of that handbag, guess what? Someone gifted that very same handbag to this lady's teenage daughter. When I asked her to describe to me the scene she had used, she told me that it was basically like watching a movie where she was at this store with her daughter and she was showing her this amazing new handbag and telling her it's now ours. And her daughter was picking up the bag and checking her reflection in the mirror to see how it looked on her. Well, it did manifest, but it didn't belong to this lady. It belonged to her daughter. And while they do share handbags often with her daughter, she could have manifested it for herself. I mean, in a different kind of situation, it may not be your daughter that gets the thing you're trying to manifest. It may be your neighbor or your boss or someone else, and then you don't get to use it, like this lady got to use the handbag. Another common experience is for people to see a movie of themselves looking out of the window and seeing the car, their, the dream car, parked on the street in front of their house. And sure enough, many of these people soon have the experience where they look out of the window and their dream car is parked in front of their house. Only it isn't theirs. What you need to do instead is feel yourself sitting in your dream car in the driver's seat as if it's happening right now. So you don't see your whole body, just like in real life when driving a car, you don't see your whole body. You see your hands on the steering wheel and the things in front of you. So in your scene, it needs to be exactly like in real life. You're sitting in the driver's seat and you feel your hands on the steering wheel. And as you drive, you feel the wind against your face and you think to yourself how much you love having this car and how much you enjoy driving it. All right. The third thing that many people do that isn't helping their manifestation is trying to manifest when they're in a really bad emotional state. Here's the deal. Yes, it's important to stay positive. Yes, it's important to interpret everything as positive and helpful for your goal, even if you can't see how yet. But 
if he just had a terrible fight with your boyfriend, for example, and he packed his things and left, or if he just got fired, or if he just woke up just plain grumpy and miserable, trying to force yourself into doing your manifestation practices in that state is like trying to push a huge boulder with your bare hands. If doing your manifestation techniques helps you get out of the funk and step into the shoes of the version of yourself that is the creator of reality, then definitely go ahead and do that. But if you feel super miserable and you push and push and push against the negative state you're in, it's unlikely you'll manage to get to the state required for whatever technique you're using to manifest a different reality right now. Just stop. Drop it all for a bit. Drop the techniques. Drop the attempt to manifest anything differently. Just let it all go. Just for a while. And do something enjoyable instead. Read a book. Watch a funny movie. Go for a walk in the park. Take a bubble bath. Call up a friend and grab a cup of coffee with him, or whatever your beverage of choice is. Go bowling or running. Do whatever makes you feel good and recharges your emotional batteries. Do things that nourish your body and your spirit. And when you're feeling better, you can go back to your manifestation techniques and you will see how much easier it is to do them when you're not sinking into a black hole of emotional pain or anger or negativity. And there's also the other side of this. When you're in a really positive, happy, full of energy state, when you feel that life is great and things are going your way, when something really great happened to you and you're truly, deeply happy, then take advantage of that by doing your manifestation techniques then, while in that state. It will be much easier because you will already be in a state where you feel that things go your way easily, so you won't have to struggle with negative thoughts as much as you would in any other case. Uh, your visualization won't be a battle against negative thoughts. It will flow effortlessly. Or any other manifestation technique you try to do in that state, in that really happy, excited, positive state, will flow so much easier for you. So remember, when in a bad state, just stop the manifestation techniques and go do something fun. When in a really good state, that's an ideal time to practice your manifestation techniques, even if you already did them that day, because you're already in that ideal state for maximum effectiveness. So have you been making any of those mistakes? And if so, which one? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and to share so that others can benefit from it too.